So, how to juice? Like, what do I be doing? When I say I be juicing, like, what do I actually mean when I be like saying I be juicing? You're gonna wanna clean up some countertop space. You're gonna wanna clean to make sure that you're not overwhelming yourself. At the end of the day, one thing you need to know about juicing before you juice is that prep is everything. And if you don't prep, you're gonna be paying for it later. Prep or pay is the moral of that story. One of the first things you're gonna wanna do is prep your fruits and vegetables. This is one of the most tedious tasks. So I've already had some of it prepped before. Already prepped, I have pink apples. I have five pink apples and two green apples. And then I have three beets that I cut off the tops of and I cleaned already. Next, I have a five pound bag of carrots that I'm going to dump into my very clean sink. And first, I'm gonna start by just giving them a general wash. Okay, next I have this spray bottle. This is just a regular amber spray bottle and I have vinegar and water in this spray bottle. So what I'm going to do now, spray over all of these vegetables. I also have some oranges that I'm gonna wash before I peel them just because even though you're peeling off the skin, you're still coming in contact while you're peeling it with the flesh of the actual fruit. So I'd just rather you know, put some vinegar and water on it and give them a good wash before I even start that process. So I'm just gonna put this in the other side. One tip that I have for oranges is that if you are going to use them either the same day or maybe the next day, you can leave them out on your counter. Um, if you're gonna have them for a couple of days, you might wanna put them in the refrigerator just to preserve them. But for me personally, I like to leave them on the counter if it's only gonna be for a day or two because when you peel these, Sometimes they get so cold that it makes your hands hurt and it just makes it a very unenjoyable process. You can just honestly leave them out on the counter and save yourself that trouble. So I'm gonna rinse these off too and I'm going to spray them down with the same vinegar water solution that I sprayed the other carrot down with. I also have my cutting board, my knife, my peeler and one of these little scrubbers. And this is what I use to scrub off all the gunk and nastiness off of the carrots. Then I rinse. Now the skin that I'm peeling off, I feel like the best thing to do with this, if you can, is to either compost it. Um, you can give it back to the earth for any animals or whatever that wants to consume it. So I'm gonna cut up the rest of these carrots and then I will come back. Okay, so now that I am done peeling my carrots, I'm gonna move on to my oranges. And I'll also explain to you another reason why it's so important to wash your oranges well before you use them. My favorite type of oranges to use for juicing are Valencia oranges. I really like them because they produce a lot of juice. But right now I just have these. So I'm gonna show you guys how I like to peel them and then what I like to do after. I take a small knife, this is called a paring knife, and then I just insert it into the part of the orange where it is connected to the tree. I make a small small incision, nothing too big because I don't want to pull up any pulp. And then I just stick my finger under and start peeling away. I've seen a couple videos of people juicing oranges like without peeling them off and they say it tastes really bitter so I would highly recommend not skipping this part. So I have my orange, I'm going to set this to the side and I'm going to peel the rest of them. I'm also collecting all of the orange peels in this little bowl. All right, so my oranges are peeled and I have all these beautiful fragrant usable orange peels that you do not have to throw away or even compost. If you wanna compost them, that's also fine, but I really, really, really like what I'm about to show you guys next. So all you're gonna do is get a mason jar and you are just going to layer these orange peels in that mason jar. I typically juice one full bag of oranges, which is about seven to eight oranges, and most of the time it does a pretty good job of filling up a mason jar of this size. There's still a couple more in here, but I'm going to add a little something to this jar before I show you guys what I do next. So I have this Jamaican bay leaf from my grandma's garden, and I did a video about this on my TikTok, but I also want to reiterate it for all the people on here on YouTube. I don't know if you guys have ever heard about bay leaves and the way that people use them in their magic practices. 
for a long time people especially black people that's all i could really speak for have been using bay leaves in their spiritual and magic practices a common practice is like writing something on the top of bay leaves and burning it to attract it to you or writing something on the back of it and then burning that to repel that energy away from you one thing that i personally like to do with bay leaves is when i cook with them because they taste so good especially the jamaican bay leaves i will like infuse it with all of my intentions for that meal before i drop it in the pot something that i have recently started is infusing my intentions into them before i put it in my oranges so i'm infusing my intention of a clean and loving home that's a safe place so now i'm going to put this bay leaf inside of my little jar and i've never done this part before but i'm gonna do it this time so this cinnamon stick is going to be for attracting abundance and i'm going to drop this in there as well and then i fill up the rest and now i'm going to take the vinegar that i have this is just regular white distilled vinegar yep and i'm going to pour this on top i'm gonna fill it up almost and shake it up so that all the air bubbles rise to the top take the top back off and then finish adding the vinegar like to the point to where you're like, is this gonna spill over? And then we are going to go over the sink and put the top on, allowing for all of the excess vinegar to kind of like drip out. Put the lid on tight and dry it off. And then I will store this in a cool, dark, dry place for two weeks. After that two weeks is over, we will get this. You can tell that there's a clear difference in color. This has all obviously been there for longer. And the liquid in here is thicker. And then most of the time it goes from that to this, to my spray bottle filled with half water and half of the solution. I use this to clean my home with. I also might add some of the concentrate to my floor cleaner when I'm doing mopping. And it's just really good at cleaning my home physically as well as energetically, and I love it. Not only does this cleaner save you money because you're not having to buy counter cleaner or floor wash or anything like that, but it is also non-toxic and you know exactly what's in it because you made it yourself. And aside from that, I think the biggest gift of all when it comes to this is it's extending the life of the gifts that that the world has given us. So you're saving so much money in the product, in hospital bills, in everything, and I love it! Please, if you juice, make this. You don't have to put the cinnamon or the bay leaf or anything like that in there if you do not want to. This is not something that you have to not be a certain religion or be a certain religion to do. It's literally just respecting the world and yourself and your home and all of that. The only thing that I would say is if you are putting this on your countertops and stuff like that, make sure that you wipe it off really well because if not, you'll see, like if I spray this on the countertop and I just leave it there and I don't wipe it off, you'll see it kind of leaves like a little orange residue on there. But that would be my only thing with this. Just make sure that you wipe it up really good and that you dilute it with water. That way you're not wasting product. Everybody was always like, West Indy Ray, what juicer do you use? Let me show you. This is my juicer. I will leave all the details to it in the description box below. It's from the Breville brand. I don't believe that this is their highest tier machine, but it is pretty good and it'd be juicing my juice, so I'm gonna use it. And again, I will leave all the information for that in the description box below so that you guys can just click it and you don't have to know anything about model numbers or anything like that. Cause I don't know that information off the top of my head, which is the real reason. So along with the unit, you're also going to get a pitcher that has a top on it to kind of make it as mess free as possible. You're also going to have one of these things that will force your fruits and veggies down the chute. Never, ever, 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 never, ever, ever use your hands because that is extremely dangerous. I remember one time I put a crayon in an electric pencil sharpener and my sister was so scared that I was gonna get in trouble when she was little so she stuck her pinky finger down there and it grinded up her finger. It was terrible. And I think about that literally every time. Shout out to you sis for having my back and not wanting me to get in trouble. I love you. I don't know why I even did that. I genuinely thought that was gonna work, but anywho. Here's the juicer. We are going to put this back part here like that, front part here like that. And then this goes in the top. Just gonna plug it in. I personally like to have a large bowl or a pot or something like that over to the side because this gets filled up really easily. All the remnants from the fruits and vegetables will go out here, so you will probably have to change this several times if you're juicing a lot or for the whole week. And for your reference, this is the bowl that I'm going to be transferring the liquid in 
once this fills up. This juicer has two modes, low and high. The low is for softer vegetables and fruits such as these oranges, and the high is gonna be for your things like carrots and apples. I'm gonna start with the high because the softer fruits tend to make this get backed up a lot easier and I just wanna get through most of it before I have to like worry about changing that out every two seconds. I know that it seems like you will probably be able to fill this up even more, but I want you guys to pay attention to this part and you might have this on your machine too. This part like dips down so that the liquid could come out, right? If I were to fill this up any more than where it is right now, this will start splashing out and making a mess. So just keep those things in mind while you're juicing. Another thing I really like about this one is it has this little like lip on the inside here where it kind of takes off most of the foam that you would get from the top of your juice. Up next, I'm gonna do the apples. Next, I'm gonna do my beets. In this case, these are organic golden beets. I prefer to use these over the red beets because the red beets just stain everything. So now that I'm done with that, I'm going to actually clean this because it seems like it's getting a little backed up and I don't need any type of problems. Always make sure that you unplug your machine if you're gonna get in there or take this off, this cover off and get in there and clean out all this stuff. Next, we're going to do the oranges on soft. Okay, so now the juice is done and we're gonna carefully show you guys what the juice looks like. There's still a lot of foam on top, so without dropping it, I'm gonna take my strainer. You can also use a cheesecloth if you want. I'm just going to take off and kind of skim off the top of this. And then I just do that until I can start to see in my swipes a lot of the actual liquid peeking through. So I know it's pretty hard to see, um, but this is the finished juice and I'm gonna bottle it up. This next juice that I'm about to do, this is just like a bonus thing because I've actually never made this before in my life. And if you're Jamaican, don't judge me. But I'm making soursop and mango juice. I only have a little bit of mangoes. I was gonna eat this. These are like the kind that we call Haitian mangoes. But I don't have much soursop left over because I yam off so much of it. <laughs> I'm just making do with what I have, okay? So I'm just gonna put this in a blender. And the methods that I've been seeing everywhere have been pretty much the same. So I'm putting it in the blender. I have already deseeded my soursop and I've taken off the skin. So the soursop, if you guys are not familiar, it's a really, really, really amazing plant to have just in general. This is what it looks like once it's deseeded and kind of like, I've been handling it, okay? It looks like this, but not completely. I'll try to put a picture like right here or something so that you guys can see. But the flavor profile is very tropical. It definitely tastes kind of like pineapple-y. It smells pineapple-y and with a mix of something else. I don't even know what to call it. It's just very, very tropical and it's absolutely delicious. It's kind of tedious to, you know, make soursop juice because there's so many seeds and you have to like remove them by hand. But it's really not that much work, especially when you think about what you are gaining from it. This is anti-inflammatory. It's really, really great for your immune system. It has a very big reputation for being a fighter of the C word. You know that one disease that everybody has it and it's hereditary and it runs in everybody's family. It's supposed to be really, really, really good for that. Very nutrient dense. You could even use the outside of it, like the skin and boil it as well. And it's good for like your skin. It's really a wonder fruit. So I'm just adding all of that to my blender. And then, oops, you gotta get every little bit. And then I'm gonna add some water, blend this up on pulse or on low, and then I'm going to strain it. I think that should be enough water. I don't want to make it too watery. So I think that's good now. And then me personally, this is the consistency that I got it to. And then I'm just going to use my strainer inside of my bowl and just... I went ahead and I blended the rest of the pulp and I strained it one more time. And then I blended all the juice together again and I'm straining it one last time. So we're just trying to get as much 
flavor out of this as possible. Now I'm going to put the juice of, I would say, I'm gonna start with one lime and then I'm gonna taste it and see if I need the other lime. This is gonna be nice and refreshing. I could smell it already. Nice tropical drink. I'm gonna put this other lime in it. People usually use like regular sugar or brown sugar in this, but I'm gonna use this organic date syrup because it's supposed to be a lot better than the traditional sugars that we use for things. And I'm just putting a little squirt in that. This is just the type of sweetener that I'm using in my home right now. I'm just gonna add some more and I'm gonna whisk it in this time. All right, so after a full day of juicing, this is what we have. This obviously, the orange juice, this one is gonna be so good. It's gonna bless my soul and my immune system be very good for the eyes. I really wish that my turmeric wasn't frozen and that I had my ginger on hand, but I don't know what happened to it. All on its own, it's fine though. You know, you make do with what you have. This is the mango sour sap juice. It's more of like a mango nectar type of consistency. Um, also, what I have done is I have cleaned off all of the fruit off of these sour sap seeds. I have washed them thoroughly and dried them and now I just have them in one of my little Pyrex containers and I'm gonna spread them out so that it's nice and flat on a paper towel and I'll just let these dry out. I also have a few of them planted outside in some dirt to see if I can get some sprouts. Anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to leave a little unicorn emoji in the comment section below if you made it up until this point. And also make sure to watch until the end because I always post a quote of the week and it's always just a nice little parting gift from me to you at the end of my video. So make sure you stay tuned for that as well. Also be sure to let me know if you like this type of video. Is this a style of content that you'd like to see? I've been trying to get more in my holistic health bag because you guys want it and that's also really 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 been a huge part of my journey especially recently so if you guys like videos like this definitely leave that thought in the comment section below make sure to like subscribe comment and share follow all my social media accounts right down there and i will see you in the next video peace